Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff from Voyager Projects here um, <coughs> with an updated rig rundown of the gear I'm using, why I'm using it, how I'm using it, and so on. Um, I've been asked by one of my subscribers to do this, so I thought it was about time as things have changed and we may be on the most simple rig I've ever run, so it's a good time to explain it all. So it all starts <coughs> excuse me, with guitars. Um, this is snowy. I haven't got Beastie here, but I'll go and get it for later in the video. Um, this is a white Ibanez JS100 uh, from 2003 um, with a DiMarzio D Sonic in the bridge and an Air Norton in the neck. Um, both guitars I've got to have the same pickups. Standard Edge 2 bridge, which is a good bridge. Um, much better than the Edge 3 that replaced it. The pots have been replaced, certainly the volume pots on both guitars have been replaced with DiMarzio pots because the stock pots were getting a bit scratchy. Uh, I'm not sure about the tone controls, can't remember. I've had this guitar since new, so it's been with me a while. Um, the Dario XL strings, uh, 19 to 42 standard set. And I have, if you can see, a um, Fat finger, which I think is made by Groove Tubes, uh, which I keep on the headstock, just gives me a little bit more sustain. And also a Planet Waves um, NS clip on tuner to keep me in tune, because being in tune is kind of important, I think. Um, the way I have it set up, the action is fairly low, but not crazy low. Um, and as you can see, I keep the bar again, it's quite a way in. Bridge is all reasonably flat, um, so there's, there's a little bit of movement in the bridge. Um, three springs, yeah, reasonably um, pliable, but at the same time it's it's not kind of crazy flying around, and it never goes out of tune, so that's a good thing. So from the guitar, uh, we come via an Elixir cable. Um, I have several of these in different lengths, so we pick the one that suits what I'm doing. This is a 10 foot one for in the studio. I also have a 20 foot and a 30 foot one that um, I use um, as and when. Now, as I'm sat in the studio, I have a remote pedal board for controlling the big pedal board. Uh, it's something I needed to do for a gig a while back. So basically, I'm using the remote feature on the IJM Music Mastermind. Uh, so I've got an old Mastermind here that um, is just connected via 7 pin MIDI cable to the Mastermind on the pedal board, and I can control anything from either controller, uh, which makes it really useful, uh, particularly when doing video demos when all the gear is way over there. Okay, talking of the pedal board, let's head across there and see what's going on over there. Okay then, so the um, way the pedal board works is reasonably simple. Uh, the guitar comes in here into the EP booster, which I tend to have on quite a lot of the time. Um, it's not in a loop. Um, I can turn it on and off just by the foot switch. Um, it's the limited edition white one. Um, but I don't know if there's anything particularly special about it other than the colour. Uh, I'm running it at 18 volts, which just seems to give a bit more headroom, a bit of a clearer tone, uh, which I like. So that's all good. And then from there, um, we go into the input jack on the MXR noise clamp, if I just pan up slightly. Now, with the noise clamp, it's like the uh, ISP decimator G-string does the same job. Um, from the input to the send, um, the guitar signal isn't actually passed through any noise gate circuitry. Um, what that does is that's used as the trigger to sense any um, your guitar signal so it knows when to clamp the noise gate on the other path which is from the return jack to the output jack. Um, so then from the send we go into the buffered input on the RJM Music Mini Effect Gizmo. Uh, I have three of these and this is the uh, one that I'm using on this rig which is the, the standard one. Um, in terms of, I have a, an early prototype and I have one that um, 
I, I got to deal with um, because it had gone wrong at the printers or something. So um, it doesn't have any printing on it. Um, and that's, um, they're both great units. They'll be going into my rack rig. Uh, but this one is the one with the standard colored blue LEDs and stuff and um, works great. So this is the one that's on this board. Um, everything's powered, as you may be able to see if I pan up, from the Custom Audio Electronics MXR power station. Um, and as you may be able to see, I'm running the 9 volt AC jack, powers the mastermind. Uh, I've got all four 18 volt jacks uh, in use. One for the EP booster, one for the catalyst, one for the OCD, and one for the MXR um, boost line driver. Um, then these two jacks are on a Y cable feeding RGM Y not, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, the high current jacks are feeding the mini effect gizmo and also the TC electronic Nova repeater. And then all the other pedals are just powered off 9 volts, each on individual isolated outputs. So that makes everything very clean. So then when we actually come to the loops, as you can see there's a whole lot of wires coming out of the mini effect gizmo. Um, all five loops are in use. Um, loop one is the full tone catalyst uh, overdrive pedal, uh, which I gave quite a detailed demo of the other day. Um, loop 2 then is the Sweet Sound Mofo Vibe. If I just zoom into that. Um, now that I've waxed lyrical about this in other demos, I'm not going to go into too much detail of it. Basically, this I tend to I switch in and out a little bit. Uh, most of the time, it's this Vibe pedal because I love a Vibe pedal, but I have put a chorus pedal or a flanger or a phaser in there. Uh, it all depends what I'm looking for, particularly when recording for that particular tone. Um, but that's this is my modulation slot, so it's usually this pedal. It's a great little vibe pedal, um, but it could be something different. And then loop three um, is the OCD from Full Tone. Um, again, running at 18 volts. Um, which is kind of my main kind of dirty overdrive signal. Um, and loop four then is the noise clamp. And as I said, it's actually the, the half of the noise clamp. The send from the money effect gizmo goes to the return jack. The output from the um, noise clamp then goes back to the return on the mini effect gizmo. So that basically enabled me to turn off the noise gate if for any reason I wanted to not have it on. Let's say I was doing a lot of stuff with the guitar volume backed right down for whatever reason and I didn't want anything cutting in and out. Uh, I could do that. And then finally loop 5, um, which is after the noise gate, is for the clean boost, which is a... Um, Currently, an MXR Custom Audio Electronics 401 boost, which, as you can probably see, is set to about 11 o'clock. So, what's that? Around about an 8 dB boost, somewhere about there. It's just a really clean boost, doesn't affect my signal at all. Um, really quiet, so, great little unit. Okay, and that then takes us back to the mini effect gizmo. And after that, we have a few pedals that aren't um, in loops that are in line from the essentially the signal from there, uh, from the mini effect gizmo here, comes out of the output and then feeds up to the RJM Y not, um, which is a MIDI AB box. Now, you might look at that and think, why am I only use why am I using that? Um, and, and to be honest, it's possibly a bit overkill at the moment for what I'm doing with this rig. I really need to turn my phone off when I'm shooting videos. Um, but, basically it's giving me a remotely controllable mute switch at the moment. Um, at some point I hope to implement a second output and maybe run a separate rig from this point. But at the moment, when output A is turned on, 
the signal carries on through the rig. When output A is turned off, it doesn't, it mutes the signal. And that's MIDI controlled um, via the Mastermind, which we haven't really looked at yet. So let's pull back and just look at the MIDI configuration just for a moment. Now there we have my lovely custom blue RJM music Mastermind MIDI foot control. Um, it's powered off 9 volts AC, um, that's fine, it doesn't run any audio through it, so it doesn't matter whether it's AC or DC. I just needed something that gave me enough current, particularly as I'm daily chaining too. Now this jack is the MIDI output jack that then feeds the Mini Effect Gizmo and the through from the Mini Effect Gizmo goes to the Why Not. So that's all the switching taken care of. And this little lead here is a Rocktron 7 pin MIDI uh, cable that goes to the remote mastermind, my old black one, which is um, I, I can run remotely somewhere else on the stage and just enables me to switch any of the settings from there. So that's the, the basic MIDI switching. Now from the, um, going back to the Why Not, which is where we got up to in the signal chain, from there we feed my trusty uh, Morley Little Alligator volume pedal, which I've been using for about 110 years it seems. Um, Minimum volume I set however I want it at the time. Um, for some things, I did a, a gig a couple of weeks ago where I needed this pedal board to be off stage because it didn't have room on stage. So I turned the minimum volume all the way up so it didn't matter whether it got knocked or not. Um, quite a lot of the time I might have it halfway. I do that a lot at church where I need full volume stuff. And then for some things, um, maybe I just need to play quieter during prayers or whatever, so I have that set to um, a much quieter volume, but it's still getting signal through to the amps um, for accompanying things quietly. That works really well too. Uh, and a lot of the time I just run it all the way off so I've got full control of my volume. And then the output of the little alligator then feeds the TC Electronic Nova Repeater, which is my delay pedal of choice these days. Um, nothing fancy about the way that's set up. I use the tap tempo a lot. Um, I have it set to a crotchet and a dotted quaver, uh, panned left and right, um, spillover on, so that when I turn it off, um, again this is a manual turn off, um, then the delay continues. Uh, the effects level control I can adjust with my foot fairly easily because of it being on the right hand side, so that tends to go anywhere from 9 o'clock right up to two, three o'clock, the rest of the control they don't touch, so um, feedback is at nine o'clock, tones at nine o'clock, modulation is just a little bit on the vibrato side, um, and we're on tape mode, and that's pretty much it. And then from there we've got two jacks, um, which have just gone out of shot, which feed the stereo inputs of the TC Hall of Fame reverb which is set with, as you can see, um, the three knobs pretty much at nine o'clock, just a little bit past, and then we're in the mod mode with long pre-delay. Um, and then two more Elixir cables that feed the amp rig. So let's move there next. Okay, so my amplification setup is, is really simple, and it is the same as it, as it has been for a, a quite a while now. A um, year and a half, I think, at least. Uh, which is two Ignator Tweaker uh, 15 watt heads and two Ignator Tweaker 30 watt cabinets uh, with Celestian G12H30s in them. Um, the two Ignators I have set differently, um, I'll explain that in a second, but basically you'll notice the cabinets are mic'd up with a pair of SM57s on amp clamps. Um, and the reason I do that is that then they go into a Palmer Singa, it's Palmer Sigma blend box. Um, so the signal, you get a really bright signal from this microphone, and you get a much more muted, um, kind of duller signal from this microphone. But the two blended together give me a really sort of wholesome tone that I really like. So there on that one, and the same on that one. So they're not a huge difference apart, and they're both pressed really close to the grill cloth, but I just find that one microphone on its own doesn't give me quite the 
full tone it's either slightly too muddy or slightly too uh, trebly um, and the two together gave me the tone I'm looking for. Now those Palmer Sigmas um, which are just basic microphone merge boxes are mounted underneath my little trolley here that you can see at the bottom and I'm really proud of that I made it myself um, and put the casters on and everything it's just an ideal thing it's got ridges to hold the speaker cabs in place and the um, microphone uh, merge boxes are mounted actually underneath so those cables these are just one foot mic cables that go down to the Sigma and then I can plug just a mic one microphone lead from each uh, into the other side so let's look a bit closer at the amplifiers okay so tweaker number one is um, the right hand side of the stereo feed um, which is the dotted eighth notes dotted um, quaver signal um, input jack there my Alexa cable coming from the pedal board I've got tight switch on bright switch on gain at about 11 o'clock in clean mode bass at 2 o'clock middle at about just before 12 treble at 2 o'clock and I am in Brit mode so that's the more martial sounding mode at the moment I've got the masters fairly low at um, just past 9 o'clock and I have this one with the power amp section set to vintage uh, this one has uh, some tongue sole 6v6 GT tubes new ones in um, they really complement the, um, the sound that this amp gives me and um, the other tubes I've, I've gone into in detail but basically there's a um, is it 7551 or something like that in the in valve one I'm not using the effect loop so it doesn't matter what's involved two and uh, preamp valve three is a um, 12 AT7 um, sort of a lower gain tube in the phase inverter slot so it just gives me more headroom uh, both of the, the tubes that aren't standard 12 AX7s in both amps are um, lower headroom uh, sorry lower gain tubes so they give me more clean headroom before they break up Okay, and the other tweaker, if we move across, which is the left hand side of the stereo pair, again we have input jack, um, this is set to deep not tight this time, so it gives a bit more low end, bright switch is on, gain is similarly placed to last time, clean, bass at 2 o'clock, this time the middle is much higher at 2 o'clock trebles pulled down to about 11 o'clock we're in the AC mode it's more voxy sounding again with the master fairly low at the moment but I will turn that up for gigs and this time we're in modern mode on the power section and this time the power tubes in this amp are um, the old Russian military tubes from the 80s um, they're 6 V6s again but beyond that I couldn't tell you very much um, but they're, they're good sounding tubes and really reliable unlike the tongue soles that I had in there as um, you'll know from if you've watched uh, one of my rant videos uh, episode 3 I think it was so that's the amp rig um, now we'll go back to the other end of the studio and uh, I'll play you through some of the sounds that I'm getting from it okay so as if by magic we now have my other guitar which is Beastie um, Similar configuration to Snowy, except this is a 2004 model. Um, again, I've had it since new. It's got everything else the same. It does have on the back, although you can't see it at the moment because it's hidden by the tuner and the fat finger, a uh, signature by the great guitarist uh, Mr. Jeff Sheets, um, who I met at a festival and was he was gracious enough to sign my guitar. Um, the other thing I guess to talk about is the picks that I use, which are little transparent things. You may be able to see them, you may not. Uh, they are V-pick, light, small, uh, triangular picks, uh, small pointed picks. I've um, been using these now for about a year. Uh, I've tried the different thicknesses, but I think this light version is the one that works best for me. So this is what I'm going with. Okay, so... Um, Starting off with 
um, a kind of basic clean tone. Now, uh, obviously I've got the delay on there and the reverb uh, and the EP booster, but there's nothing else going on. Uh, all the loops are turned off on the Mini Effect Gizmo. So um, it just um, gives me a very clean sound. Um, the one thing I can't do remotely, obviously from the remote pedal board, is to turn off the delay, the reverb or the EP booster, um, but they aren't things that I generally I will turn off too much on the fly when I'm out as a remote pedal board, um, which doesn't happen too often but it's very useful here. Okay, so that's my sound one uh, on this bank. So just a basic clean tone. And what I like about that is that there's loads of headroom in it. It's not breaking up or anything. It's very clean. Um, responds greatly to picking dynamics even if I'm on the bridge humbucker um, and pick really hard we're not really getting any grit in that um, which is exactly what I want um, when I'm playing a clean tone I don't want any um, you know really uh, anything kind of pushing it to the edge so um, that, that's kind of what I go with for that. Um, the alternate function that I have set up on the Mastermind uh, introduces the vibe into the path. And obviously I'll adjust the speed of the vibe too to suit the, the mood of the song. Um, now what I, tend, what I like to have as my next preset in my main bank um, is essentially the same tone, the same clean tone, but with the boost kicked in. Um, so it just gives me clean, but just a little bit louder for maybe picking out some single notes. <laughs> And you might be able to hear that the amps are just slightly being pushed into a little bit of soft clipping there, basically just because the output is higher. Um, so yeah, the, the amp is having to work a little bit harder, um, which is great, as I say, just for kind of punchy, stabby kind of tones, but still clean. Um, next up, um, so I also have that with the vibe on. Um, I don't need to demonstrate that, it's just the vibe, but louder. Um, next up we have the catalyst turned on and every time I have a dirt pedal on I have the noise gate turned on as well um, just to keep things cleaned up so um, that loop will come on at the same time so you know, no noise on the catalyst but uh, it just gives me <laughs> So we're definitely getting break up there, but it's still fundamentally a clean tone, just with a bit of edge. Uh, watch my uh, video exploring full tone OCD and Catalyst um, to see in detail how I use um, these two pedals. Um, so that's that sound, and again that with the boost. <laughs> Thank you. 
without the boost at the end just um, pulling the volume down um, and obviously at some point you need some dirt so um, preset 4 brings in the OCD <laughs> if I was playing rhythm like that I would turn off the delay um, probably keep the reverb on but um, just you know give it um, a bit more tightness um, yeah it's it's an overdrive pedal um, it's it's got plenty of gain but it's it's still a basic overdrive pedal and then because occasionally I feel like you know Van Halen or Hendrix or someone like that I don't know why um, I can't play like them even on video and I always feel the greatest respect for people who on video manage to play really well because it seems as soon as I hit go on the camcorder I forget how to play and I know that there are other people out there who've experienced the same sensation so let's but let's just um <laughs> So on humbuckers, the overdrive sound is um, not fabulous, but um, with, with the overdrive sound with the vibe is not fabulous, I should say. Um, but pull the coil tap, and I get a, a lovely kind of um, sound. <laughs> So, um, there we go, that's a, a cool tone that I really like. Uh, and finally, um, for playing leads, um, what we have is button 5 is the OCD with the boost. So... It sounds a bit crazy with all the reverb and delay and stuff, um, but in a band mix, that level would be almost lost. So it's it's an interesting one. Your ear does funny things when it's just hearing a guitar on its own. And finally, just for if I need anything crazy, sustain um, the alternate preset just kicks in the catalyst in front of the overdrive and the, the OCD and the boost. <laughs> So that kind of gives me that, I like different stages of kind of sonic insanity really. So starting off really clean, clean but with a boost just to push the amp slightly. Mild overdrive, much more overdrive, and then louder with the boost, and then crazy. And I can get all that within one bank thanks to RJM's uh, brilliant alternate preset feature. Now I know I've talked about RJM a lot, um, that's because they're first of all really great people and secondly I'm very happy to be uh, one of their artists um, and if you're looking for 
anything from what is essentially a simple MIDI switching solution like I've got here. Basically, I've got, if you ignore the remote controller, um, I have a MIDI foot controller that controls five loops and an AB box. Um, no, no crazy MIDI presets or anything like that. This kind of basic setup works great. It's expandable, so if I wanted to get my TC G Major 2 out of the cupboard and plug that in, I could change the presets and all the settings on that too. But it's um, you know, it's just little tools that work together and work together perfectly because they're all made by the same company and they're all made really well. So I will hold my hand up and say I absolutely am proud to endorse RJM Music Technology Equipment and if you're looking for anything in the kind of MIDI switching guitar related stuff, um, give them a look because they're great people and great products. Okay, I hope that's been an interesting look at the rig as it is currently. It may be the simplest rig I've ever run, or certainly one of them, um, but it's it works for what I'm doing most of the time. It's a really flexible setup. Um, doesn't mean there won't be something different around the corner. Um, whether that's a small pedal board for sort of, you know, fly dates, which won't be MIDI switched or anything like that, um, or whether that will be a big rig um, setup. Uh, watch this space. It may even be both. Okay, until next time, take care. I'll see you soon.